Hello everyone, and welcome to my Days of Our Lives official. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Ava and Sophia discussed Fiona at the Bistro. Ava was informed by Sophia of her encounter with Fiona at the Bistro. Sophia remarked, Now that I know how awful she is, I wish I hadn't confided in her. Sophia said that while Fiona was in custody, she had no one to talk to. Ava questioned Sophia whether she didn't have any female acquaintances her age out of curiosity. Not really at all. Holly Jonas was with me for a time, but our friendship kind of blew up, Sophia remarked. I'll venture a guess. You broke up with him because of a boy? Asking, Ava. Sophia said that Holly had dated the boy Sophia had liked, breaking the female code. Sophia disclosed Holly's prom plan to Ava. Sophia remarked, anyway, Tate is a really great guy, and he and Holly were just so wrong for each other. Sophia denied dating Tate when Ava inquired about it. He and Holly recently split up, and while it's true that she wasn't kind to him and did a lot of terrible things to him, I'm also probably somewhat to blame for their breakup. Sophia remarked, and I believe he might still be fixated on her. Do you feel like the other woman, then? Asking, Ava. Sophia acknowledged. Ava concurred that moving past a breakup required time. Sophia nodded and stated it was the reason she hadn't wanted to go after Tate just yet. Ava gave a sly smile. Are you aware of what it's like for the other woman? Sophia inquired of Ava. In response, Ava said, let's just say I know what it's like when people want to sew a scarlet letter to your blouse. Ava counseled Sophia not to be bothered by the thoughts of others. Go for it if Tate is someone you really like and you like. You put everything on the line to defend him. And does it really matter what others think? You're a gorgeous, intelligent, and strong woman. Take responsibility for it. Ava said, own who you are. For the motivational speech, Sophia thanked Ava. Prefer other soap operas over General Hospital, B&B, &B, or Days. Come discuss with us on our SC boards. To engage in conversation and interact with fans, click this link right now. Aaron congratulated Tate on Brady's acquittal at Salem High School. So, how does this impact Holly and you? How about Aaron? Holly and I are no longer together. Tate said, we broke up. What had happened, Aaron inquired. Tate clarified that the argument between Holly and him was about Brady and Sophia. Tate revealed to Aaron that Holly had given Sophia a slap because Sophia had acknowledged her feelings for Tate. Given that Tate had broken up with Holly, Aaron smirked and inquired as to whether Tate intended to date Sophia. Tate acknowledged telling Sophia that he was still in love with Holly. That it would take some time for you to move on from, Holly, makes reasonable. But can you envision yourself with Sophia when you do, really? How about Aaron? Tate acknowledged his ignorance. She is quite attractive. She has also shown me a great deal of support with all that happened with my dad. You know, like actually there for me, said Tate. Aaron questioned Tate about if he was reluctant to move on because he wanted to reunite with Holly. Holly and I don't seem to be able to resolve our differences. She really betrayed me, like, I mean, Tate remarked. Aaron said, like, multiple times. Tate believed that although the first lie about the drugs had been horrible, the second lie, about their relationship, that he had said to get to his father had been much worse. Tate remarked, forgiveness is kind of hard. Yes, Aaron said. It seems like you guys are finished, Aaron remarked. Tate gave a yes. What's holding you back from Sophia, then? Why do you wait for this? How about Aaron? You're telling me that you wouldn't mind if I dated Sophia? Tate probed. No, Aaron replied. Tate countered that Aaron had harbored feelings for Sophia. As you may recall, I was friendzoned. I've moved on. That's all right, said Aaron. Tate was encouraged by Aaron to go after Sophia. Tate went to the bistro to see Sophia after school. Are you here for your sliders? inquired Sophia. 
Tate said that his purpose for going was to speak with Sophia rather than eat. What topics did you wish to discuss? inquired Sophia. Tate said, you and me. Sophia said yes when Tate requested to hang out after work. Ava noticed Sophia smiling and grinned as Tate left. JJ, Holly, Abigail, and Chad celebrated the newlyweds in Chad's apartment in Paris. Holly recalled her chat with Abigail in the cafe when JJ mentioned that he hadn't spoken to her before the wedding, not even over the phone. According to Abigail, she spoke with her brother over the phone. Holly asked, didn't you two just talk on the phone last night, seeming perplexed? What did Holly mean, JJ asked. Holly clarified that Abigail was talking on the phone with JJ when she ran into her. JJ responded, no, she wasn't. Gazing at JJ with a perplexed expression, Abigail urged him to consume his toast. Chad pressed for further information, worried. Holly gave a description of what had occurred. I think I might have misinterpreted, Holly remarked. You did, indeed, Abigail replied. Chad begged Holly to stay, but she felt uncomfortable and excused herself. Holly insisted on going. All right. Chad remarked, I appreciate all of your help. After giving a nod, Holly left. Okay, so you would like to clarify why you informed Holly that you were speaking with JJ over the phone? Chad inquired. I had a very touching day. I wasn't thinking clearly, Abigail remarked. Chad dismissed Abigail's explanation with a nod. Abby, who were you talking to if you weren't with JJ? And you're lying about it, for crying out loud? Chad inquired. Abigail asked to talk with Chad alone. Mark spoke with Clyde on the phone at the cafe next to Chad's apartment. Mark remarked, there has to be another way. To assassinate Chad, Clyde instructed Mark to carry out his plan. Mark was told by Clyde to retrieve a package that was hidden beneath the table near the door. A gun was in the package. Mark said, I get it. Before performing the deed, Mark promised to confirm that Chad and Abigail were married. Holly yelled out Mark's name as he cautioned Clyde to follow through on his vow. After hiding the revolver beneath his coat, Mark turned to look at Holly. Holly commented on how odd it was that she'd run into Mark. You seem to be in Paris, but why? Asking, Mark did. Holly gave an explanation of her visitation with her mother. Holly, what has brought you to the City of Light? Mark clarified that he had matters to attend to concerning his parents' inheritance. Holly expressed her condolences for your loss. Holly commented to Mark that seeing two sailmites was such an odd coincidence, and he inquired as to what other persons Holly had encountered in the city. Holly said, Abigail de Mera. After saying he hadn't met her, Mark's smile vanished. Yes, I was aware of her return. Is she also currently in Paris? Said Mark. Holly gave Chad an explanation of her attendance at Abigail's wedding. Holly stated, they are once again husband and wife. Wonderful news. Mark exclaimed, I'm so happy for them. Mark inquired as to what might be wrong when Holly said she hoped everything worked out for Chad and Abigail. Holly clarified that the awkwardness had been caused by a breakdown in communication. I have to get going, declared Mark. Holly nodded and assured Mark she'd see him in Salem. JJ approached and inquired about the man Holly had been speaking with as Mark was leaving. Holly mentioned that her brother attended the same school as Mark, who was a Salem-based physician. What's this guy doing in Paris? JJ inquired. Something regarding the estate of his parents. How ironic to run into Abigail here and now him at the same cafe, Holly remarked. JJ concurred. After leaving the wedding celebration, Holly wanted to know what had transpired. It had not gone well, JJ acknowledged. I simply don't understand my sister's deception about speaking with me, JJ remarked. Neither am I, Holly remarked, I still feel so guilty for speaking up. JJ disagreed, saying he was relieved Holly had voiced her opinion. JJ stated, it's definitely not right here. Thinking out loud, JJ questioned whether Abigail could not be his sister. Has DNA evidence proven that she is, in fact, Abigail? 
Hollis inquired. That was the case. But I worked as a police officer long enough to know that evidence might be fabricated, J.J. remarked. With a head shake, J.J. expressed that he would never forget his mother's words to him following their meeting with Abigail. J.J. stated she didn't feel that was her daughter in her heart. J.J. contended that Jennifer might have been correct and the person posing as Abigail was actually someone else. What if you caught her lying just to prove it? Stated J.J. What are you hiding, Abby? Chad questioned her in his apartment in Paris. Abigail hesitated for a second before stuttering that she would tell him everything. There was a tap at the door, and Abigail began to explain what she had done. Chad answered the door reluctantly and was shocked to see Mark there rather than J.J. Mark gave his introduction. Mark stumbled to say that he had seen Holly and she had informed him about the nuptials.